In this video, we'll talk about how to factor rational expressions. So rational expressions are when we have things of the form where there's a polynomial on the top and another polynomial on the bottom. And that's the type of expression that we have here that we want to factor. So I first want to talk about an incorrect solution to this because it's a really common mistake that I see uh, folks make when they encounter expressions like this. All right, so I'm just going to copy the problem down one more time. So we have negative 45 times 7 plus 3x to the 4 times negative 5x plus 1 to the 8. The rest of this I'm going to write quickly. All right, so I've gone ahead and just written down the, uh, the rest of it. So one thing that I cannot do, this is not going to be true, I'll put a slash through this equal sign, is to say, oh, there's a 7 plus 3x to a power here. There's a 7 plus 3x to a power here on the bottom. Can't I just cancel them? And if I cancel them, I would get a negative 45 still. The 7 plus 3x would be gone on the top, all four of them. And then I would still have a negative 5x plus 1 to the 8 out of minus the minus 12 and all that stuff with it. And on the bottom, now I would just have 7 plus 3x. Because four of these canceled, I would just have this to the 4. So it turns out I can't do this, but I want to talk about why. All right, so it turns out that I can only cancel on the top and on the bottom of a fraction like this when the terms that I'm trying to cancel are factored out. They need to be factored completely out of the top and completely out of the bottom. So let me give an example where cancellation works. So quick example. So let's say I had AB plus AC on the top and then 4A on the bottom. So I could factor an A out on the top and get A times B plus C over 4A on the bottom. And one thing that I could do now is notice, oh, there's an A on top, A on the bottom. I can rewrite this as A over A times the fraction B plus C over 4. So in other words, I can separate the A on the top and on the bottom because they've been factored out, because they're multiplying everything else that's there. So I'll put a parenthesis around this. And now notice that A over A is just 1. And when you multiply 1 by something, you just get that something. So that leaves us with B plus C over 4. And this is actually technically why cancellation works. It's because when you do cancel, technically you're just creating 1. And when you multiply by 1, that 1 just goes away. So let me also give a scenario where we cannot cancel. Where I wouldn't be able to cancel is if I had something like AB plus C on the top and then just 4A on the bottom. I cannot cancel the A's because the A on the top has not been factored out, but the A on the bottom has. So I give this explanation because one of our course goals is to really master and understand why things work. That's a big part of transitioning to college level math. All right, so let's talk about, well, how would I now do this correctly? All right, so let's give a correct solution now. So I've copied down the original problem. So seeing that I can cancel on the top and on the bottom, when I have stuff fully factored out, let's try to factor out the common terms. So we will factor out common terms. So I notice that, for example, there's a 7 plus 3x term here, and there's another one there, so I'm going to be able to factor out some of those. So I can factor out 7 plus 3x to the whatever the smaller power is. So there's four of those 7 plus 3x terms here. There's three of them here, so I can definitely factor out three of them. That's the smaller power. Um, and then I see negative 5x plus 1. There's some of them here, eight of them there. There's nine of them here, so I can definitely factor out eight of them. Negative 5x plus 1 to the 8. And there's something else that's common. If we look at the negative 45 and the negative 12, I can divide both of those by 3. In fact, I'm just going to factor out a negative 3. All right, and now I'm going to write everything that's left over in a big old bracket or a big old parentheses. So from this first 
from all of this, this whole first term, when I took out a negative 3 from the negative 45, I'm left with a 15. And then I'll also have, there were four of these 7 plus 3x's. I took out three of them. So that means there's going to be 7 plus 3x to the first power left over, which is just the same thing as writing 7 plus 3x. Um, there won't be any negative 5x plus 1's there because I took out all eight of them. So now let's move on to the next term. So the next term, from the negative 12, when I factor out negative 3, I'll be left with plus 4. And then I'll also be left with a, let's see, a negative 5x plus 1 to the first power, because there used to be 9 of them, and I took out 8. And if my power is 1, I don't need to write it. And that's all that's left over from that second term. So I'll close my bracket or my parentheses. And now all over the denominator, which is already factored 7 plus 3x to the 8. Now the 7 plus 3x cubed is factored out on the top. So now I can cancel it with stuff on the bottom. I can cancel away three of those terms and that'll leave me with five of them on the bottom. So we end up with negative 3 times negative 5x plus 1 to the 8. And then in bracket let's simplify this whole thing. So if you distribute the 15 15 times 7 is 105, and then I'll get plus 45x. If I distribute the 4, we'll get minus 20x, and then plus 4. Combining like terms, 45x minus 20x, that is 25x. 105 plus 4 is 109. So in the bracket, I, we get 25x plus 109, and in the denominator, we have 7 plus 3x to the 5. And that is our answer. So one important thing I want to note about this example is we'll actually see stuff like this, these rational expressions that look very close to this, you know, a lot of common terms on the top and on the bottom. We'll see stuff like this when learning derivative rules. So derivative rules. So if you don't know what a derivative is yet, that is totally fine. It's something that we'll talk about later in the course. It's one of the key concepts in calculus. So fun fact, this expression that I gave you all to simplify here actually turns out to be the derivative of a special function. Um, but after we take the derivative of functions, we will be interested in eventually doing things like setting the whole derivative equal to zero. And to do that, we need to be able to factor it. And factoring this was purely algebra and pre-calc, so we could handle it.